Welcome back everybody to the Gamecock Dynasty here as I am your host Belax Memes as we come off of probably our roughest stretch of the season a very short intro there but we have lost two in a row to ranked teams we have not won a single ranked matchup this year and the Gamecocks are trying to get back on track as Spencer Rattler's first pass of the game is intercepted by the linebacker there he was just hovering in that zone and Rattler never saw him coming. And just like that, this very depleted Ole Miss Rebels offense has a chance to strike first. And their quarterback, Altimer, pushes Cam Smith over twice in one play as Luke Altimer gets about 19 yards now. Second and goal. He is just going to keep it simple and keep it himself. And he's got an easy, easy touchdown there for the Rebels. A quick Seven points for this offense as the Gamecocks, a tough way to start the day. And now a third and ten early on to Rattler trying to throw this one. Throws it into coverage and that one. Markevious Brown is kicking himself right now for dropping that one. So two back-to-back -back bad drives and the Rebels start their next drive giving it to star running back Zach Evans. You need to watch out for him today as he is going to be an absolute problem if the Gamecocks cannot close some of these gaps. And just like that on a third and three, they don't close them. And RJ Roderick luckily with the sure-handed tackle there around the five. The Rebels now would be forced to a third and goal. Now Altimer, Evans is going to be a play action. He wants to throw it to the end zone and kind of into triple coverage could have been intercepted by any of those guys instead Altimer gets a little lucky and the Gamecocks are forced to settle by stopping them at the five yard line and giving them another three points the Rebels are going to go up 10 nothing early in this one Gamecocks now finally getting it onto the ground with Marshawn Lloyd they've been behind the stick so many times early in this first quarter we haven't really been able to even touch him yet on the ground so now third and six Rattler Wants to run around. He is going to try and take it himself. He does set the edge and he has got that first down. Just barely able to get enough speed to get around that outside defensive lineman. Now first and 10. Rattler rolling around. Sets his feet. Fires to the slant. And that is Josh Van. The veteran receiver is brought down after about 16 yards. Now first and 10 on the next play. Rattler goes to Lloyd right up the middle. Beautiful blocking and beautiful seals there by the offensive lineman. And now we continue down the field. First and 10 to Kirion Joyner. Keeps it to CBS. Cuts back inside and he's got a touchdown. Beautiful, beautiful play there by CBS, and he has got an amazing start to this day. He has not had much impact on the ground besides when we get close to the line to gain or the goal line. And that time, though, he showed off some finesse as the Gamecocks strike here 10-7, to and the Rebels settle now for a third and 10. Altimer trying to go to the screen, and he's intercepted by Jordan Birch. Big man with another big play Jordan Birch has been massive this year and he makes another impressive play that time third and eight for Rattler and company he is gonna keep it himself and continues to use his legs he has had an impressive impressive first quarter now final play of the first Rattler play action he calls it off rolls out deep to the end zone touchdown Xavier Leggett diving forward for a touchdown Oh man, the Gamecocks turned that first quarter around just like that. It is a 14 to 10 ball game, and the Rebels are trying to get back in the right side of things. And Zach Evans is going to make that happen here on a third and two as he gets 13, just kind of bobbing and weaving. Second and eight now for the Rebels. Altimer out of the shotgun. He is going to look to run it himself. Instead, he gets brought down. He loses four. And it's a third and 12. The Gamecocks are struggling here on these third and longs, though. Altimer launches it into open coverage, and there he is. Dayton Wade, 34 yards on that one as the Rebels get another first down. Third and three, though, for Altimer and company. He wants to throw this one, and he just has to take the sack. The Rebels settle for another short field goal. That is their second field goal within the 10-yard line. And the Gamecocks are... Pretty happy with that, in my opinion, as Josh Van on a first and 10 out to the 40. Tripped up. Oh, man. Could have been a lot bigger. Looked like it might have been a touchdown, but now they have a third and two at around the 28-yard line, and Dak is going to get just sacked. Went for the read option there on third down. Lost about three yards, and Mitch Jeter comes in. He has struggled this year getting field goals to go, and this one is going to 
just sail wide right. It goes in and curls back out at the last second, and the Gamecocks offense comes up empty-handed now as Altimer goes to Bentley on a third down, and Ulysses Bentley, a very awesome name, not a very productive play. They get the punt there again by this Gamecock defense. Now in a second and eight, Rattler takes off into open field. He's got room at the 50, at the 35, and he is shoved out of bounds right around the 44. Excuse me, I said the 35. Should have been the 45 there. And now in a third and inches, Rattler goes to Lloyd, who makes a couple man miss. He's got a beautiful hole right up the middle. Now third and 10, though, for Rattler and company. You would like to get a little bit closer if you're going to settle for a field goal, but Rattler does not intend to do that as Josh Van makes a beautiful move on that one, and he just beats his man as we head into halftime up 21-13 now, second and six for the next Rebels possession. Zach Evans running over some guys, and he's got a beautiful first down run. Now a second and eight is where we pick up again in the second quarter. Evans on the outside. He's going to try and get around his man, Jordan Strawn. And Jordan Strawn, the big D lineman with a beautiful tackle there. Now third and 11. A big stop here if the Gamecocks get it. Altimer throwing across the middle. It's dropped. Could have been intercepted by Mo Kaba. He was in beautiful position. And he just did not go for the ball for whatever reason. Now Rattler on a first and 10 to start the next drive. Wants to throw, steps into the pocket, Juice Wells wide open. He has gone to the 20, to the 15, to the 5, touchdown. Giving him a little Heisman pose there at the end of the play as Juice Wells makes his corner miss on the zone as he does a double move there at the end of his route. And the Gamecocks now extend their lead 28-13. Now, Altimer, though, has other plans as Zach Evans all kinds of space up the middle of the field. Thankfully, he kind of cornered himself on that left side, ran out of room. And now they face a third and seven deep in Gamecock territory. And Bentley's got it on the screen, and he has nowhere to go. So the Rebels settle again for a very, very short field goal. This one is from about the eight-yard line. You've got to expect sometime soon they're going to stop kicking these field goals. But the Gamecocks have a chance here to pretty much solidify this one here. Up by 12. A touchdown would make it very difficult to come back as Jakirion Joyner keeps it himself on the pitch. And he's got a 13-yard run, and they're going to keep Dak in the game now on a read option first and 10. It goes to Lloyd up the middle, and he's got some nice blocking and some nice room. He's got 11 yards now. Rattler back into the game. First and 10. He's going to change the play. Going to be a play action to Lloyd. He launches it to an open man. Xavier Leggett breaks the tackle, and he is down at the one. You have got to be kidding me. This is... Xavier Leggett almost had his second touchdown of the day, but instead they finish the drive off with CBS, who bounces off a couple of tacklers, would-be tacklers, I should say. And we go into the final two minutes of this third quarter up 34-16. The Rebels trying to get back into this game. They've had decent drives. They just have not been able to complete them. And that is not going to help a three-yard sack on third and eight. Now the Rebels have to punt this away. Fourth and 11 is where they would stand, and that is going to be a pretty nice punt, but Amarion Brown has a chance to return it now as he picks it up. He's going to bring it up the middle and bounce it out to the right side, gets around the edge to the 50, to the 40, down to the 30, to the 20, cuts it back to the left, got some space, and he's hit from behind. Oh, he almost had that when I was ready for it, but the Gamecocks would quickly get down around the 5 and on a second and goal. Joyner gives it to Lloyd, and they finish off what Amarion Brown started there on the special teams unit as they make a beautiful, beautiful statement here in williams Bryce Stadium. Now the Rebels pick the ball back up on a first and 10. Altimer, deep slant route to Heath in. Oh my goodness, he breaks into the open field out across midfield. Darius Rush can't catch him. And Malik Heath with 75 yards on the play just when the Gamecocks thought they could settle down on defense. They make a very, very big mistake. So Rattler needs to come out here, and he needs to make a statement as they get a 14-yard catch there by Xavier Leggett. Now first and 10 for Rattler. 540 and counting. Rattler wants to throw again. This time he settles for the underneath man again. He's got Juice Wells bouncing off of tacklers as he fights forward for about 11 yards now. Rattler is out of the game. It goes back to Dakiran Jordan. He keeps it himself, makes the man miss on the edge, and he has not got the touchdown. Oh, man. Really wanted him to get that one. He is brought down at about the three, and Marshawn Lloyd gets in on the two-yard run. 
The Gamecocks extend their lead 48-23 with about four and a half minutes remaining. The Rebels have a chance. Not very likely here. Second and 10. Altimer down the middle to Malik Keith as he has come alive here in this second half. More notably in this fourth quarter. He didn't have a single catch in the first half. And now multiple big catches. And on a third and two, Luke Altimore is going to lose one yard. Fourth and three now. This is pretty much the game here. Altimore out of the shotgun. Takes the snap. Wants to throw. He's got a lot of room to run. Instead, he fumbles it. And Jordan Burch picks it up. Unfortunately, I wanted him to return it, but he could not quite get it. The Gamecocks, though, snap their losing streak, and they take down this struggling Ole Miss Rebels. 48-23 to is your final here in Columbia as we head into the final week against Clemson next week. But a big, big statement win here for the Gamecocks getting back on the board in the win column. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I was scared in this one when Ole Miss went up 14 or 10 to nothing. Because these last few weeks haven't been easy and we've been down in a lot of those games and we just came back too late. Um, but I think all the injuries Ole Miss had, you know, missing their starting quarterback probably took a bigger toll on them. And obviously we were able to string together what um, one or two, three, four, five, six unanswered touchdowns. Basically they had two field goals, but they weren't able to contact or counteract those with touchdowns of their own. As far as the turnover game goes, we actually won this one. Um, Ole Miss turned it over twice. We only turned it over once. Both teams won interception. Ole Miss won fumble loss. Time of possession, fairly even. We had the only two penalties in the game. We had a pretty good punt average for our one punt. 677 total yards. 8 of 11 on third downs. Very, very efficient. 0 for 1 for both teams on fourth downs. Passing yards, 307 to 164 and rushing yards for us, 40 attempts, 226 yards, and 35 attempts for 166 yards for a touchdown with Ole Miss. Four touchdowns for us on our side as far as rushing goes. Spencer Rattler, pretty decent day, I will say myself. 13 completions, 22 attempts, 283 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Dak didn't have a special day through the air, but he did it on the ground more today. Two for four, 24 yards, and as you can see, four for 32, a very very productive day for him. I'm going to miss having him around. 24 for 118 and two touchdowns for Marshawn Lloyd. And 8 for 43 and two touchdowns for Mr. CBS. Juice Wells, 5-107 and a touchdown. Josh Van, 384 and a touchdown. And Xavier Leggett, 387 and a touchdown. Jaheim Bell only managed to get one catch this game. Defensively, Mokaba, a very solid game. 10 tackles, 3 for loss. No sacks on his part. We did add Cam Smith with a sack. Zach Pickens with two of them. And... Um, a few guys down here, Jordan Birch with one as well. Also the interception, and let's see who forced that fumble. I can't remember who ended up forcing the fumble. It is getting credited to Cam Smith. He had the forced fumble, and also Jordan Birch with the fumble recovery. So just a good all-around game for this Gamecocks team. Unfortunately for us, it comes right at the end of the season where we have to take on the 14th-ranked Clemson Tigers here in the Palmetto Bowl. It's going to be a tough matchup. DJ Uyagalele so far on the season, 324 yards or 324 passing attempts. He's completed about 150 for a little over 2,000 yards, 17 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Spencer Rattler, 317 for 191, 2,535 yards, 23 touchdowns, but also 17 interceptions. So both teams have their strengths. Both teams have their weaknesses. The the Tigers are fresh off of a massive upset loss to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets and a loss to the third-ranked Miami Hurricanes early in the season. Uh, but they have had a couple of good ranked wins at the time, notably against Florida State and Boston College. So not going to be a pushover whatsoever. And so far this year, um, we have been dominated by ranked teams. We've been pretty close in all of them. Georgia beat us by 10 uh, Mississippi State by 13. Ignore this score. If you guys watched the last episode, you saw the final score of that was about 45 to 38. But I, I didn't get the game saved, so I just simulated it and we lost. Um, got dominated, by the way, 37 to 7 um, against the 12th ranked Gators. And now we have our opportunity here to get that first really big ranked win during the uh, tenure of b memes. It's been interesting so far against these ranked matchups. We haven't had a lot of success and um, a lot of times we've went down really big in those games. So that is a big, 
big opportunity for us to stay in this game early. We need to avoid turnovers. We need to not go down by a lot of points because we have struggled trying to get back into games. As you can see, recruiting-wise, not a lot going on. We've got guys that um, we're about tied with with four other schools. And that is going to do it for this week's episode. If you did enjoy, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. I'll see you guys next episode when we head back to Williams-Brice Stadium to take on the 14th-ranked Tigers. Peace. Mm -hmm.